Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm gonna give a few seconds for more people to trickle in before we get started. I think, see the numbers to get on. Okay, I think we're ready. Excellent. All right, welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair Explore Session. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you this is, uh, uh, in this session today. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation is also being recorded, so uh, it will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash BACS. And uh, we have a great variety of schools that we'll be presenting to you today uh, that vary in size and location and characteristics. So I am going to just show you all the list of organizations that we have here presenting today. Um, so we have reps from Boston College, Connecticut College, uh, Polytech Institute, uh, University of Colorado, Lafayette College, and Columbia College, Chicago. Excellent, so uh, we will get started with each of our presenters. So first up is Boston College. Okay, thank you everyone for being with us this evening. And um, as uh, um, the introduction uh, indicated, we're here to talk about a variety of institutions. So I'm gonna first kick things off by talking about um, my institution, Boston College, um, which is located just outside the city of Boston, where in fact, we are six miles from downtown Boston, um, which puts us right in a suburban residential area. We're very fortunate, we kind of benefit from the, the kind of best of both worlds, a traditional college campus, but um, having a very close um, distance, uh, being in close distance to the, um, the city center. We have public transit directly across the street from our campus and our students absolutely take advantage of everything the city has to offer. But I'd also say that our the campus experience is something that is quite special about BC. I love to talk about the fact that although we have our medium-sized university, we kind of embody the experience of a small liberal arts college in terms of our priority given to the undergraduate experience, but then also the residential component for our undergraduates. Without it being required at any point, um, we see that the vast majority of the undergraduates choose to live on campus. In fact, we see that more than 90% of our seniors opt to live on campus every year. So if you can imagine a 21 year old choosing to live in a college dorm with an RA in their senior year, I think it says a lot about the tradition of the campus and also in lieu of the fact that we um, do not have uh, a Greek system, so there are no fraternities or sororities, everything really centers around being involved with clubs and organizations, leadership programs, performing arts, and of course, athletics. As I mentioned, we are a medium-sized institution, so as you can see, our campus is pretty compact. Um, that you're not going to have a great distance to go no more than 10 minutes from your residence hall um, to really any spot on campus and also our major athletic facilities are located right on the main campus as well within the city of boston you're going to find that reference of, of boston being america's college town to be very true um, there are nearly 200,000 university students 
uh, that will arrive um, in the Boston area each year. And actually between the months of September and May, um, the average age of the city of Boston is 25. So we are a smaller city in comparison to say Chicago and Los Angeles, but I, I like to also say we pack a mighty punch um, and we do a lot and we offer a lot in terms of those resources for internships, research programs, um, and then also the culture. And if you're interested in professional sports, we, we offer a variety of options for students, but maintaining that close-knit community, both on campus at BC um, and within the city of Boston. So important things to know about the shape up, uh, excuse me, the makeup of the university is that we have four undergraduate schools. Our largest is our liberal arts college, Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And so of our 9,400 undergraduates, approximately two thirds of our students are majoring within arts and sciences. And then the other third of our students are spread amongst our three pre-professional schools. An important takeaway is that there's an emphasis on students exploring their interests and whether that leads to a minor in another um, undergraduate college or discipline that seemingly is not uh, connected to their, their major at the university. We encourage that exploration and students defining their talents and their interests. And also with that understanding that you're going to continue to evolve as learners and, and people that you know really kind of gravitate towards um, new industries that you've never been in, introduced to uh, before, um, new areas of study that you've never been able to take advantage of during your high school years. There are over 1,600 courses offered every semester at BC. You will never be able to exhaust the curriculum. So we want you to really take on that, uh, that feeling of exploration and autonomy to heart. A couple of um, updates of what's going on at BC is that we um, have, um, we will be opening our new integrated science center and launching a new major in human centered engineering, as well as global public health. The this fall. We're really excited about these options for our undergraduate students, but also it says a lot about how the university is looking at higher education within the 21st century. And then the last point that I want to mention is that BC is one of 27 Catholic Jesuit institutions in the United States. We're very clear about our mission, but while also being a very inclusive community at the same time. So regardless of a student's faith background or if they're not interested in a faith background, background or development of faith, um, we invite those students to still have a very um, welcoming and um, nurturing experience as undergraduates and it can play out in different ways, but certainly the mission will touch upon every student at some point in their four years at BC. Thanks so much and I want to leave plenty of time for my colleagues to share uh, important information about their institution. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over uh, to the next presenter. Peter, you're muted. Sorry. Yep. Our next presenter today is Connecticut College. All right. Thank you, Peter. Uh, my yep. video has been stopped. So if you can open that up, I will get us going. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So hi there, everyone. My name is Zach Street from Connecticut College, and I'm going to begin with a overview of the college. What you're seeing in front of you is the southern portion of the Connecticut College campus. We are a small residential selective uh, traditional liberal arts college in New London, Connecticut. Um, we have about 1800 students, almost all of whom live on campus. So it's a very strong residential community. And we're a traditional liberal arts college in the sense that we really focus on an interdisciplinary environment where you will have the chance to study a lot of different things and make connections across disciplines. Um, small classes, dedicated faculty, uh, research possibly as early as your freshman year, 
Um, so really just an undergraduate focused experience and a strong academic and residential community. And it's beautiful as well. We have a 750 acre Arboretum campus with small ocean views and also riverfront property. Um, and there's trees and trails all around with a beautiful walkable um, main heart of campus as well. A little more on our location. We are halfway between Boston and New York City. There's a train station not, not far from campus that will get you to those cities in a couple hours, or you can take the camel shuttle uh, or uh, drive with friends or whatever it may be. But we're situated to give you a lot, a great access to the nat beautiful natural areas as well as some of the exciting urban areas of New England. But what I want to focus on today is three things that make us distinctive even among traditional liberal arts college. And the first is our commitment to integrative education. We've recently gone under a really massive reinvention of the liberal arts curriculum. Um, and it resulted in what we call our connections curriculum, which is designed to bring everything you do in your college experience, your major, your courses outside of your major, your double major, study abroad, career activities, senior project, everything, and really integrate those in so that they are enhancing each element is enhancing the other um, and creating a cohesive uh, entwined experience so the connections curriculum um, the key operating element is that in addition to declaring a major or two double majors are super common um, you'll also join an interdisciplinary center or an integrative pathway these are broader themes like public health creativity entrepreneurship global capitalism. Uh, we have a pathway on migration. Uh, we have a new one this year starting on food. Um, these are things you might not major in, right? Too broad uh, for a major, but they might they may unite multiple interests that you have. Um, and it brings students from different majors, different areas of expertise into a cohort to uh, overlap with the curriculum together, even though they may be exploring different dimensions of these broader themes. Food is a great example. You can imagine the economics, the biology, the chemistry, um, the sociology of food. Um, and it's just a, a really empowering way to get a new level of focus for your life during and after college. And it culminates in a uh, senior project and it's always fun to see those uh, on campus at the in the fall semester. Here are a few examples of real life camels uh, and their majors, minors, and on for um, But I could read more about connections curriculum and our pathways and centers if you're considering Khan College. I also quickly want to mention that we have a career development center that has received great recognition for our four year career prep. You'll have a career advisor from day one on campus all the way through graduation, helping you not just apply for jobs or think about your future, but improve your interviewing skills, your resume writing skills, all of that, because we know how important um, job placement or graduate school entrance is at the end of your four years at Con. We have guaranteed paid internships for all of our students. It's not required, but nearly 90% of our students will take advantage of that funded opportunity. I also quickly want to mention our honor code. It's sort of the secret to what's so special about our residential community. There is a lot of trust and connection among our 1800 students. Um, and a big part of that is the honor code. Every student hand signs the pledge upon arriving at Con to basically hold yourself and your community to your high standards and, and be the most responsible community member you can be. Integrity is a big part of that. And it works to the level that our final exams are self-scheduled and unproctored, meaning when it's time for that chem final, you go to the exam room whenever you're ready, because not when it's assigned, and you take that exam. Um, and we don't need professors there to monitor our students because they are monitoring their own selves um, as part of that commitment to the honor code. And we found that it works, and we're really proud of that. I'll just scroll through a couple of campus. Uh, four seasons of New England are beautiful, especially on an Arboretum campus. Um, it's one great thing about uh, our, our 750 acres. Uh, very quickly, we are Common App and have been test optional for more than 12 years. It's an important part of our approach and commitment to equity and holistic application review. We meet 100% of need for students we admit, and we also have generous merit scholarships. Lots of ways to explore and learn more online, but I want to close by saying 
Azure West Coast Connection, the director of West Coast Admission for Khan College, email me, set up an interview during your senior year, or connect with me on Instagram at West Coast Camel. I'm based out West. Um, I hope to be in California and in the Bay Area often uh, in this coming year, even though I wasn't able to this past year. And I, I look forward to connecting with you. Thanks so much. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes. Next up, we have Daniel from RPI. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Daniel Poole. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at RPI, uh, or Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, we're over on the East Coast. If my slide will advance. Just thinking about it as it decides if it wants to go on the next slide or not. Uh, so we're in Troy, New York. So we're equally uh, located between Montreal, New York, and Boston. I'm not sure if the slide wants to go on now. Let me exit out and try again. I can just carry on talking. Uh, so we're in Troy, New York. Uh, we're about two and a half hours north of New York City. Uh, we're about the equal distance from Boston and Montreal as well. We're founded in 1824 by Stephen Ben Rensselaer. Her name of Eaton. Uh, the big focus of Rensselaer from the outset is hands on learning. And the, let's try this again, sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> So the big focus was on hands-on learning right from the get-go, and that's something we still continue to this very day. Uh, our grads have literally built uh, much of the US, uh, much of the infrastructure in New York City with our civil engineering. We were the first uh, course of study to offer civil engineering in the English-speaking world. So if you ever find yourself on Jeopardy, that was our RPI graduate. Uh, we have helped man land on the moon with George Lowe directing the Apollo space mission. Peter Bolin, a famous architect, uh, was the first designer of the Apple stores in New York. The at symbol in your email for better or worse, and so on. But who are we today? We're primarily focused on undergraduate students. We're about 6,000 undergrads, primarily focused in the STEM fields. Uh, we have students joining us from all 50 states and around 17 countries for undergrad. Once you factor in our grad population, which is around 1,700, it goes up to around 37 countries from there as well. And the big focus is that new polytechnic. So you, we want to make you intellectually agile. We want you to be problem solvers. We want to really educate you so you can go on there and kind of develop the new industry. Everything's changing at such a fast pace in the STEM realm, STEM realm that we want to give you those core competencies so you can then be agile and adapt to that changing landscape. We do have five distinct schools, but we say five schools with low walls. Uh, so in there, you can see that we have engineering, which is about half of our student body still. Around 30% will join us for science, but we also have an architecture program and the School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences and School of Business Management. Many of our students will take advantage of this. They'll take uh, courses within those different disciplines. All students are required to take 24 credits of humanities, for example. So with that, many students will do major or minor across the different disciplines. So one of the beauties is you can really tailor your education to where your passion lies. And the good thing is we don't expect you to figure that out as soon as you join us. Uh, so if you come in undecided, you do have those first three semesters to figure out what that passion is. Uh, and then from there, many of our students actually change their major. They might do a 180 or go in a completely different direction. So you find that passion through that hands-on learning and those group race projects. You have access to things such as a centrifuge, so looking at how earthquakes will impact structures, a manufacturing innovation learning lab, so looking at how large scale fabrication will take place, uh, wind tunnels. You have access to two of the most powerful supercomputers on a college campus in the country, and I go on. Uh, one of the big things is also the access to research. You can bring that as early as your second semester. Uh, so that's something if you're going to medical school where it really stands out on your application. We also want to have you that real world application of that skill set. So we set it up so you can have a co-op experience or an extended research experience or an extended abroad experience in your junior year. So that can be up to eight months in length. We, we help you partner with uh, different industries. Uh, you can have that application of that theory and see if that future career industry is a good fit for you. And the outcomes for our students are strong. Around 85% will go into a number of the, the different companies you see in front of you. But many students will also go to graduate school. So if you're looking to go to med school, we assist you with that. We have accelerated medical programs, but also pre-health tracks. 
And in terms of student life, uh, like I mentioned before, we are based in Troy, New York. Uh, so it is a, a young, vibrant uh, population within the region. There's around 18 different colleges and universities in the Capital District region. So because of that, many of the amenities put in place are for that younger demographic. Uh, we have live music on the Hudson River in the warmer months. Uh, we do have those. The winter is a little chilly down there. We have a farmer's market uh, throughout the year as well. We have a Troy pig out. Uh, it's a lot of artisan stores, a lot of small coffee shops, small restaurants, not really those chain stores. And you're about 10 minutes away from downtown Troy. So it's very much a walking city where you have that access to get in there. Uh, so if you're coming from the West Coast, you do not need a car. Uh, we have 200 different clubs and organizations. So you can really find something that you're passionate about. Uh, a big one is our outing club because we're in our three different wilderness areas in the Adirondacks, the Catskills and the Berkshires. If you feel like skiing, you can do ski rentals, pretty discounted. I went once, it's like Bambi on ice, but you're much younger than agile than me, so I'm sure you do much better. Uh, we also have around 75% of our students participate in athletics. We have two D1 sports, men and women's ice hockey, and then primarily D3 from there as well. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can connect with us. Uh, I traditionally recommend the Instagram. It's a great way to get an insight into student life. Uh, we do have a number of our past webinars recorded on our admissions YouTube page as well. Uh, and then finally, our tagline is, why not change the world? Uh, so hopefully we can assist you with that uh, and kind of go from there. But apologies about the technical issues from the outset, uh, and I'll leave it for my next person to take over. Excellent, wonderful. Now we have Kelsey Livingston from the University of Colorado. Kelsey. Great, thanks so much. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey Livingston. I'm from the University of Colorado Boulder or CU Boulder. I'm sure many of you hear it that way. Uh, quickly, a little bit about me. Um, I'm actually originally from the Bay Area and I'm a CU Boulder alum. So I just think it's cool to share that because I have, you know, been in your shoes before in some capacity and now I'm on the admission side, which is kind of cool uh, to have that perspective for you all tonight. A little bit about CU Boulder. Um, we are a large public institution, about 28,000 undergraduate students. So something to consider there, right? We are a larger school. Um, but having said that, you know, you may notice on the screen there, we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. And, you know, that also translates to 85% of your classes being 50 students or less. So yes, lecture halls do exist at CU Boulder, but you know, a majority of your classes will be those smaller classroom settings so that you can, you know, have that time to talk to your professors, make those study groups, things like that. And when you do have a lecture hall, you know, maybe Monday, Wednesday, well, on Friday, you're going to get together with about 20 of your peers um, in a recitation, right? So then you have the chance to have that smaller setting, ask those questions you maybe didn't get to in lecture. So I just wanted to share something about that. Uh, Boulder is, you know, about 30 30 miles from Denver. It is a college town in a lot of ways, a city too. Um, you know, there's a lot to do on campus as well as in the city of Boulder. And it's a very accessible campus. You know, you get a bus pass when you come to CU Boulder as a student, and that gets you to, you know, go skiing for the weekend. That gets you to Denver for a Rockies game. It gets you downtown when it's snowing and you can't walk. And it also gets you to the internet, the Denver International Airport, which is great for especially our out-of-state students, right? Uh, we have eight colleges or programs. I'll go into that a little bit um, more in depth on our next slide. Um, we have a lot of courses to study from, um, a lot of different programs. And I often get the question, you know, what is CU Boulder known for? Well, our nationally ranked colleges are the College of Engineering and Leeds School of Business. But, you know, you can come to CU and really do whatever you want. Um, it's very popular for our students to uh, be double majors or have a major and a minor combination. So know that while on the Common App where our application is located, you have to select a major for admission purposes, you are not, you know, tied to that major in any way. You can change your major, add a program, things like that. So know that um, that is definitely an option at CU for you to truly customize uh, your academics. So here are the colleges you can choose from. And one I'm just gonna highlight a little bit more in depth is our program in exploratory studies because I think it's very unique to CU Boulder where it is uh, you know, essentially our undecided program. It's for the students who uh, you know, are unsure of what they wanna do or you wanna do everything and just truly explore. 
your first year on campus. It does not add any more time to your degree. It just gives you that extra guided support your first year on campus. You can apply directly into exploratory studies on the Common App, and it is also a second point of entry for our students. Uh, we review you for your first choice major, and we also review you for exploratory studies, so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket by maybe applying to a more competitive program like engineering, for example. Uh, outside of the classroom setting, uh, you know, I already showed you some wonderful pictures of Boulder. Uh, all our students are required to live on campus their first year to kind of create that home away from home. Um, and here's just a glance at, again, the accessibility of campus. Um, and, you know, while it's snowing here today, we truly do get 300 days of sunshine. We're a very outdoorsy um, community. It's everything I believe is truly walkable uh, on campus as well as get off campus, very bike friendly area um, as well. So just give you a kind of idea of the atmosphere uh, and the type of students that are at CU Boulder. Now, what kind of, um, you know, legacy are our students leaving? How are they being successful after, uh, you know, they leave CU Boulder? How do you find a job, right? Um, all the questions, you know, that you are asking uh, during your time in college, as well as perhaps before making your college decision. Well, 92% uh, of our students are employed within six months of graduation, um, and our students are successful in finding jobs because of our wonderful career services office on campus that Students can, of course, utilize right during their time as a CU Boulder student, going to career fairs, getting help and advice and resume, cover letter, uh, but also utilize after uh, they graduate from CU Boulder because once a buff, always a buff. So that'll always be a resource for you to go back to for help and guidance. And I'd like to share this slide just to show you some kind of top uh, companies that are employing our buffs. Um, I like to also point out Google since that's relevant to the Bay Area, but also Boulder now since there is uh, now a campus in Boulder. So this just kind of goes to show you, uh, you know, locally, you can absolutely find a job if you have connection with internships during your time during your undergrad. Um, but also, you know, four year degree, it gives you access to, you know, a worldwide kind of network. So how to get to CU Boulder, you know, I already kind of alluded to the Common App, which is where our application is located. And we participate in a holistic review of our applicants, which means you're more than just a number. You know, we want to understand who you are as a person, which is why we require uh, two short essays, why we wanna hear about what you're like in a classroom setting, hence letters of recommendation. Uh, and then the other thing I just really wanna point out from this checklist is our, uh, you know, the SAT, ACT score, uh, you know, that is guidance that is from the state of Colorado, um, whether or not that is required. So CU Boulder does not make that decision. Um, so I do not have any guidance at this time for 2022 applicants on test optional policies, but know that that information is coming. When I know, you will know and we'll make sure to, um, you know, support you through that process, whatever the case may be. Uh, best way to be competitive for admission at CU Boulder is to apply early. We have two application deadlines, both non-binding. Always best to apply early to kind of get in that first choice kind of applicant pool there. If you're interested in learning more about CU Boulder in a specific program, want to talk about uh, talk to a current student one on one, we have countless virtual experiences available um, for you to choose from. So please go check out what we have to offer so you can learn more specifics, again, about programs or just talk to students one on one. And that is all the time that I have for today. Please reach out if you do have any more questions, use the Q&A, and I'll go ahead and pass it off to the next presenter. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kelsey. All right, and uh, our last presentation for the evening. Oh, no, it is not. Oh, no, it's not. One second, sorry. <laughs> I got confused, sorry. Kathleen from Lafayette University, you are up. A reminder to all the attendees that after the presentations, we'll also have a Q&A with all of our panelists. And I uh, just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And off to you. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen Williams. I am the West Coast Director of Admissions for Lafayette College. I am here in Easton, but a former Californian. So one thing I wanna tell you, Lafayette College is, as I said, in Easton, Pennsylvania. Sometimes at a college fair, I get, are you in Lafayette, California? We are not but you may already have a connection to Lafayette, California. If it, I mean, to Lafayette College, oh my gosh, now I'm doing it, to Lafayette College. Um, if you've ever put on a pair of Levi jeans, um, Chip Berg is the CEO of Levi Strauss, and he is a 
um, Lafayette grad. He was an international affairs major. If you've ever put on Vineyard Vines, it was started by a Lafayette guy who was an English major um, at Lafayette. Lafayette was the first college or university to have English as a major. He and his brother started Vineyard Vines. And lastly, if you've ever picked up a Crayola crayon, that probably came from Easton, California, because I'm uh, Easton, Easton, Pennsylvania. It is late here in Easton, uh, Easton, Pennsylvania, because we are home to the Crayola crayon. Lastly, if you've ever seen Hamilton or listened to the music, you know that Lafayette is featured in that. Uh, Lafayette um, was an amazing young man at the age of 19, set sail. Uh, in defiance of his king to help the colonists win the Revolutionary War, became like a son to George Washington. Um, there are letters between the two of them in our library, which is pretty awesome. He was a guy way ahead of his time. He was a suffragist. He was, a, um, he was an abolitionist. And he, his motto was Kernan, why not? And it is the motto of the school. So Lafayette College is an applied liberal arts school. We have four divisions. And what does applied liberal arts mean? It means that students are taking information that they learn in the classroom and applying it to the world, um, whether that's through their externships, internships, or through the, through the community service they do. So four divisions, engineering, We've been doing that for 150 years plus, so long before it was cool to be an engineer. The social sciences, the natural sciences, and the humanities. We do not admit by major. We do not admit by division. We believe that if we've accepted you to Lafayette College, you can be any major you want. We ask our engineers to declare by the end of first year, everyone else to declare by the end of second year. We are a college, an undergraduate college. That means that there are no uh, grad students to compete with for research opportunities. It also means you're never taught by a TA or a grad student. You will always be taught by a professor. 10 students to every professor, average class size 18.6. We have about 2,600 students, over 200 clubs and organizations. Lafayette College is division one for sports. That may come as a surprise to many, uh, given our size. If you were to Google football rivalries, Lafayette and Lehigh rival rivalry is always listed in the top 25, sometimes in the top 10. And that's because the two schools have played each other more times than any two schools in the nation. They played their 150th game at Yankee Stadium in 2014 to a sold out crowd with the Empire State Building lit up on one side with Lafayette colors and on the other side with Lehigh colors. So we have 23 divisions one sports and um, certainly having that football rivalry. You don't need Stanford or Cal to do it. You can do it right here in uh, Pennsylvania and have a big school spirit even at a smaller school. Scholarships, our merit scholarships, we have full and half tuition merit scholarships plus marquee awards that are between ten dollars and $20,000. We are an Army ROT school, ROTC school and we have various uh, uh, sports of the 23 division one sports that do have sports scholarships. We're also one of the few schools in the country that meets 100% of demonstrated need. We require the FAFSA and the CSS profile um, to submit both, but cost should not be an impediment to attending Lafayette. So where is Easton, Pennsylvania? Well, we'd like to say we're in the middle of everywhere. Closest airport for you to fly into from the Bay Area would be Newark. Uh, closest in terms of a direct flight, otherwise you could fly into Abe, which is about 20 minutes from campus. You're looking at an aerial view of downtown Easton. Uh, to give you some orientation, the college sits up here on College Hill. If you, there are some steps you can walk down, you can also take a shuttle. Uh, about right here is our arts campus. That's where our film and media study students are theater students and our fine arts students would take their classes. It's where our black box theater is, our cinema and our um, radio and television stations are. I love downtown Easton. Everything is really locally owned, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, the roundabout is home to the oldest farmer's market in the country. Our students certainly will come down there on Saturday mornings. In addition, some really fun festivals. Garlic Festival is in the uh, October, not as big as the one um, in California, for sure, uh, so, so not as big as Gilroy's, but um, a great festival. Also my favorite, Bacon Fest, where 100,000 people will converge on Easton and there'll be bacon in every kind of way that you could imagine, including vegan bacon. As for me, I like the real stuff. Um, what you can't see in this picture, uh, but you could see in the aerial, is that Easton sits where the Lehigh River at 
and the Delaware River converged, so lots of water surrounding us. So lots of bike trails also, if you like the outdoors. That's the picture of our downtown arts campus. Um, we are gonna assign you to a career counselor and an academic advisor as soon as you arrive on campus. So we, um, we really believe that establishing those relationships and getting those externships and internships are important. Uh, and that's why 97% you know, of our students are either in grad school or gainfully employed within six months of graduation. Our acceptance rate to medical school is 75%. Our acceptance rate to law school is in the very high 90s. And we have a Dyer Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship that hosts all sorts of activities, including Shark Tank-like competitions. We are a common application school. We will be test optional for the next two years. Um, and as I said previously, we um, do require, I mean, we do meet 100% of demonstrated need. We do a holistic review. We are a residential campus in the truest sense of the word with 96% of our students living on campus every, uh, all four years. This is not a place that empties out on the weekend, which I think as Californians, it's really important for you to know. Uh, we do look at demonstrated interests. So the fact that you're here tonight, very helpful. Also, um, we do highly recommend interviews. There are so many things going on with us virtually right now that there's no reason you, you can't show some interest in us if you have that. We're also a school that's um, an early decision school. So early decision deadline is November 15th, regular decision January 15th. You can also convert to early decision too. Um, so as I said, lots going on. We are so lucky. Our students are back on campus. We expect to be completely back. Um, next year to our pre-pandemic state, but we're already you can set up times to meet with our students, come to our campus, tour it, um, and definitely set up your interview. So thank you so much for your time. I know I talked really fast tonight, but we are pressed for time and wanted to, to introduce you to Lafayette. So thanks so much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kathleen. And yes, I did miss, misspeak earlier, and I apologize. We do have one more presentation from Columbia College. We have Marty. Hey, Marty. Hey, hey, thank you and Kathleen, great, great to see you all again. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening. And I hope that the case study program for you all was insightful, uh, maybe a little inspiring and uh, certainly a good, good exercise for you all. Um, I'm gonna share some information about Columbia College Chicago. And uh, I hate to burst the bubble, but we may not be the Columbia that you're thinking of. Um, we're often mistaken for the, the other Columbias that exist, maybe the Columbia that's in New York. Uh, but we also are uh, closely uh, referred to or, or mistaken for a, a college in Hollywood. Um, so let me talk to you about, if I may, Columbia College Chicago. We are a school located in downtown Chicago, and we are a school devoted entirely to creative work. Uh, by the way, here's my contact information. You are welcome to screenshot any of this information if you'd like. Um, and I forgot to mention my pronouns, Marty, he, him, and his. Columbia College Chicago, we're located in the South Loop neighborhood of downtown Chicago, and our educational and, and uh, philosophical mission is to support students of all creative endeavors. We are also totally a liberal arts college. And so for us, that means that subjects like math and science and history, those really become ingredients to the creative work that we produce. We have also intentionally built in business and marketing or entrepreneurship classes in our degree requirements so that all of our students are getting very practical experiences. And those practical skills are really focusing on the creative industries, how the creative industries work, how they exist, how money is made, and how our culture is fueled by the creatives. So four reasons, I think, why students, especially from the Bay Area, choose Columbia College Chicago. Number one, the city of Chicago. Chicago is the third largest city in the United States, right behind Los Angeles and New York City, respectively. Uh, I know from my own experiences, but also from the experiences of our students, that Chicago is a city where work is possible. Students can earn pre-professional experiences while they're a student in Chicago and certainly at Columbia. I think number two are values for complex collaboration and really collaboration with difference. We have students coming from all 50 states, over 60 countries. And my friends, our differences are what we bring to our work. And that's what makes our work relevant. That's what makes it matter. That's what challenges the status quo. We are also a school, uh, as many of my colleagues, 
colleagues highlighted tonight, where hands-on learning is how we make our, our stuff. That's how we produce our work. So you see in this frame here, this is a fashion design class. Students are literally starting in their studios in their first year, in their first semester. And I think all of this leads to, I hope, endless and, and uh, really a continual opportunity for, for networking and career preparation as part of the Columbia experience. We have around 6,000 undergraduate students, just over 6,000. Um, our incoming class for last year, see over 60% of our students self-identified as students of color and around a quarter self-identified as first-generation college students. So again, difference really matters to us. And 99% of our Columbia students are receiving aid. The academics and the, really the creative areas at the college fall into six areas, uh, media and digital arts, our visual arts programs, our music and sound art programs, performing arts programs, our communication and writing, and again, those business and management programs that also really focus on the creative industries. And so here's a bit more of an extensive list of our programs. I will give you a snapshot at, I think, what we're most known for, especially from the Bay Area uh, perspective. Absolutely our acting and our musical theater programs. We have both BA and BFA programs, uh, but we also have a comedy writing and performance program, one where students really learn how to write uh, and, and sketch comedy, but also to perform it. Um, so for those budding SNL writers or cast members, that's what our program is designed for. And this program is actually co-taught at the Second City in Chicago. So a world famous uh, sort of improv training ground throughout the United States. Uh, and the, the, the first location of it is actually in Chicago and our program is co-taught there. Um, one th important thing to note about our performing arts programs is that we really expect our students to engage with Chicago's performing arts community. So let me say it this way, we encourage our students to audition off campus. You are not prohibited from doing that. Uh, we encourage that. Also popular are our film and television programs, um, including and closely related to that our animation and our game design programs, um, but really any type of media and digital arts programs, those are popular. Our music programs, we have contemporary music programs. And so whether you're performing music or composing it or maybe engineering it or even studying the business of music, um, it is focused on the contemporary musical landscape. Believe it or not, we have five photography majors at Columbia, um, and I love the connections. Uh, students, for example, majoring in photography, but also majoring in advertising and really, again, piecing together that art plus business or art plus commerce perspective. Um, and I'll round out our list on our journalism programs um, and included and closely related, of course, our, our writing programs, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. So just to give you a sense of the, the types of programs that I think we attract um, from students from the Bay Area. Quickly, as my time is winding down, just how do you get to Columbia? You'll find us on the Common app, as well as our own app. Either one's cool, we just need one. Uh, likewise, we always try to practice a holistic admission process. It is very rolling. So the application opens in August and kind of stays open the entire school year. So proud to announce that we have chosen to be a test-free admission and test-free scholarship school uh, beginning fall 2022. So we will not be considering test scores for admission or for scholarship consideration, but all students who are admitted are automatically considered for scholarships. And likewise, for those students who submit auditions and portfolios. As you can imagine, the audition and portfolio process may vary from program to program. So if you have any questions, just give me a shout. And my friends, thank you again for your undivided attention. I'm gonna throw it back to our lovely host, Peter. And I, again, thank you for your engagement this evening. Excellent, thank you so much, Marty. All right, I invite all the panelists to turn back on their cameras and we can do uh, a couple of quick questions before we wrap up. Um, probably only have time for one question for everyone. So I will give my favorite question is, uh, do you wanna tell us a fun fact, a fun or interesting fact about each of your schools? And we can start right from the top with Zach. Right? I, I can uh, jump in. Oh, sorry, it was, yeah, sorry, it was boss. <laughs> no worries, but Zach, you can go ahead and then I'll go to Mary Beth, sorry. Okay, no problem. Let's see, uh, there's a few fun ones to choose from, but one thing that I think is really distinct and uh, 
great for our positive student experience is the fact that we have the riverfront campus and the ocean view. Uh, we're the only campus in the NESCAC, the New England Small College Athletic Conference that has the, uh, the riverfront waterfront uh, for our sailing and rowing teams. So it really helps students who love the water or love to row or just want to walk along the river. Mary Beth. Sure, this is kind of tied to a tradition at the university and something that would normally be taking place at this time of the year. Um, it is the Boston Marathon. Uh, and the route of the Boston Marathon actually runs adjacent to BC's campus. Um, and it coincides with the state holiday Patriots Day. Um, so there's a lot of celebration. Uh, students are very enthusiastic, not only by the um, camaraderie that comes from cheering on marathon runners running by our campus and often faculty administrators and students are, are part of the Boston Marathon. They also have the day off from school. Uh, so uh, that's uh, caught another reason for celebration. And uh, next up, Daniel. Took me by surprise. I was expecting <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I know we're well known for engineering and STEM, uh, but we do also have students that graduate and go into the arts. Uh, and one fun fact is we have Bobby Farrelly. So if you've enjoyed such creations of Dumb and Dumber, uh, something about Al, uh, something about Mary, sorry, Shallow Al and such uh, is also an RPI grad. So it's not just engineering and STEM. We cover all the bases here at RPI. And then next up from uh, University of Colorado. Go ahead. Great. And my mine is also related to an alum, sort of alum, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, attended CU Boulder. <laughs> but did not graduate because he hacked into the CU Boulder system just to prove that he could. Um, but, you know, once he co-founded that small company, Apple, we now know and love, uh, we gave him an honorary degree. And as a sorry, he actually donated a bunch of Macs that are in our library. So it's just a fun little story to share. And Kathleen? Yep, so in, in light of the fact that we're talking about alums and that I'm also gonna kick it over um, to Columbia College. So <laughs> Um, for anybody who follows baseball, you know, the Chicago Cubbies were, you know, they were hapless for a long, long time. But Joe Madden is a Lafayette grad. Um, he was an econ major at Lafayette. He is the person who managed those hapless Cubbies and took them to the World Series and won it. He is now have, has a connection with California because he is now the manager at the Angels. So you never know where your college journey is going to take you. Uh, all Amazing. Right. Yeah. Uh, Fun fact, uh, when the Cubs won the World Series, their World <laughs> Series championship parade literally ended right across the street from our admissions office. So we see it all, even the Cubs win a World Series in Chicago. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. So that wraps up our session today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we uh, once you close all of your windows, you'll get a very quick four question survey. We ask you all uh, to take that. We'd really appreciate it. And this is also just one of the many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for more. And then in about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recordings and also the others, even the case studies as well, uh, will be available at strivescan.com slash BACS. Thank you everyone for joining us today and we really appreciate it. Take care all.